Hello everyone, Joe Fernandez here, and today I'll be going over a Demon Hunter playstyle guide. We will initially talk about the best comps for a Demon Hunter, as well as updated talents and traits before getting into gameplay. The best comp for Demon Hunter right now is Demon Hunter Rest of Shaman Moonkin. This is due to its incredible tankiness as well as multi-target pressure throughout arena games, able to outlive or outpressure their enemies. You can also do setups with Root Beam on the healer with Chaos Nova on the DPS to make for devastating offensive goes. Another composition that's very powerful is Warrior Demon Hunter with a Mistweaver or a Rest of Shaman. This comp is a very strong melee cleave, usually able to slay their enemies with crazy damage and again, outlive their opponents. The best and ideal traits to go for as Demon Hunter is two Laser Matrix and one Revolving Blades trait. This gives you your most DPS as well as some overall healing, which can be valuable as the main weakness of Demon Hunter is that they are squishy in stuns. The stat priority has also changed too, which is now Crit Haste, Versatility, and then Mastery. These will be your main go-to talents as Demon Hunter. The notable changes are playing with Blind Fury, as Fellblade is now lackluster without the use of Demon Blades. It's better to have Immolation Aura and Blind Fury as it's more reliable DPS, as it's not relying on RNG with procs for Fellblade. Having Fell Eruption is very powerful, as it gives you another stun on low cooldown, which is underspellable, being crazy valuable for offensive and defensive plays. It can also be used to mana if enemy healers easier, which will we get into with our detailed analysis gameplay. Demonic and Soul Rending is now the go-to as well, due to the amounts of self-healing you can do as a Demon Hunter, making it very powerful to live against most compositions, especially Cast the Cleaves, allowing you to play more aggressively, which can help with getting kills. Demon Hunters can do quite a bit of peeling, and when time to perfection, it can save yourself or your teammates. There's decent utility spells which can negate the enemy from playing the game, buying your team time to live. Chaos Nova is an excellent tool that is mainly used offensively, but it can be used for defensive purposes too. Stunning targets defensively makes them completely stop damage, forcing them to either trinket or get a dispel, so it's ideal to try to hit two targets with Chaos Nova if possible. Imprison is another great spell to negate melee or casters from doing anything if used well. You can use it as an interrupt or when your team is in trouble to stop damage or any offensive momentum from the enemy player of your choice. It can also be used offensively to shut down enemy healers and give you huge win conditions. Vengeful Retreat can sometimes greatly help against melee players. The 70% snare makes it increasingly hard for them to connect and will most likely bait other mobility spells from them, which you can further kite with the use of Fail Rush. Using your peels in situations where your team is under pressure will negate them a lot or force trinkets, which is highly valuable in arena games. Controlling them so they can't kill you or your partners buys your team more time to get a kill later in the game. Demon Hunter has a lot of small things it can do that can turn the tides of an arena game if executed well. It has niche mechanics and plays it can do to increase the odds in your favour to win against compositions that could be incredibly difficult otherwise. Mana Rift can be very powerful against most healers in the current meta. Typically you will use Fell Eruption on the healer and Mana Rift them, so they can't avoid it at all unless they trinket it. This is how it's usually used and it's incredibly effective at destroying the enemy healer's mana bar and results in winning quicker. However, it can have other uses, for instance it can be used against two DPS targets as it does quite a lot of damage to them. You could also use it as another form of an interrupt, say you have no pummel and the healer is casting a big heal, you could put mana rift under them which will either stop them casting to run out of it or they will simply have to eat the Mana Rift in order to cast the big heal. Did you know Torment has its use in Arena? Simply by using Torment on a Hunter's pet whilst you're stuck in a Tracker's net will make the Hunter pet hit you, thus freeing you of your route. You can also use it whilst Intimidation is on the pet, 
which will actually force the pet to stun you instead. This may not work on all hunters as it will be dependent if they have macro management to stop their pet from attacking you, but will probably work against most hunters. Reverse magic is a very powerful tool on a low cooldown that's mainly used to break your own healer out of important CC. Even reversing magical effects such as Hodge, Repentance or Polymorph. This allows your healer to keep you alive and is basically another trigger for them on a 1 minute cooldown. If the enemy team overlaps their CC, you can reverse both at the same time with one use of reverse magic. You could also use it situationally for yourself, say on an enemy offensive go. If they are about to win but you are stuck on a route or a nova, you could dispel your own route and look to peel the enemy DPS with Chaos Nova, Fell Eruption or Imprison. Using reverse magic can sometimes be done for offensive reasons, to create more pressure and to try to force defensive cooldowns or try to land kills. Metamorphosis is mainly used for damage, but you can abuse the immune effect when you cast it initially. Doing this on things to avoid a kidney shot or certain CC during important offensive goes from their enemy team can disrupt their gameplay completely and allow you to further disrupt them with CC of your own. These niche plays will separate even the best of Demon Hunters from each other, making them incredibly valuable to utilize when possible. Bear in mind these are high-end plays so mastering them and pulling them off will be difficult and it may not work all the time, so don't be daunted by the fact it may not work all the time. Practice makes perfect and having these work sometimes could be enough to make matches favorable for you and your team. The last but not least, avoiding damage as a demon hunter can be extremely valuable. Demon hunters are known for generally being kill targets and if you tank too much high passive damage, you can easily be a kill target or be forced to use defensive cooldowns in situations where if you kite instead, you could hold on to them. It's important to know that you can kite most melee and casters in the game, so doing it in matchups will be a requirement and can be a big help when it comes to staying alive. Most melee can be avoided as Demon Hunter with good uses of Fell Rush and Ventral Retreat. You can use either to gain distance from the enemy melee, forcing them to use a mobility cooldown, then use Ventral Retreat if they keep trying to follow you. Due to the incredibly low cooldown of Fell Rush, you should have your mobility back before other melee players get theirs back, resulting in you being able to Fell Rush more in turn being able to kite more often. Blade Dance can also be used for avoiding damage, abusing the 100% dodge mechanic as you Blade Dance. This is absurdly powerful when avoiding things like a Kidney Shot or even just high damaging spells such as Mortar Strike to decrease the likeliness of you dying. When you want to dodge things like Kidney Shot, it may be wise to hold onto your Blade Dance cooldown to do so. You'll lose some DPS, but if you can survive because you blade danced a kidney shot, you can see that this is much more valuable. Due to your high mobility, you can also avoid casters easily, getting behind pillars out of their line of sight. Root effects are a demon hunter's bane, but with assistance of your healer's dispel, and sometimes using reverse magic, can get you out of tricky situations. Specking into soul rending, demonic appetite, demonic, and unending hatred will give you a great amount of self healing, not only making you more tanky, but also allowing you to play aggressively against caster cleaves more often, knowing you can burst during demonic form to gain a lot of self healing. Ideally, you should have burning soul traits too. This is on the third tier and also gives you added self healing and creates a soul fragment from your target, being very valuable. Kiting well and specking right into survivability can increase the likeliness of you staying alive, which will be an ongoing concern as a demon hunter, since most teams will want to try to kill you. Playing well with the above spells to avoid damage will make it much more difficult for enemies to kill you, along with other plays discussed before, such as niche plays, peeling and doing damage, should net you kills and more wins for your team. That's it for this demon hunter guide, hope you guys enjoyed it and make sure to plus skill as always. Thanks for watching.